What's up friends of Wild Rift and welcome back to another Rift Guys Wild Rift video and for today we are going to take a look at the best available blind picks for this patch. When it comes to blind picks it's always a thing to ask yourself what champion can you pick without knowing what the enemy is going to pick. But before we hop into the video let's talk about our question of the day. What champion would you blind pick? Let me know in the comments below. For me, it is always going to be Jace, and every every one of you knows that I'm a Jace enjoyer. Let's just be honest, I'm a filthy Jace abuser and that's how it goes. But let me tell you why Jace is so good as a blind pick in solo queue. Jace is a bully when it comes to laning. He has access to the double amount of abilities than other champions in this game. Well, not strictly double, but rather than four, he technically has six with some different passive things. But for every of his normal ability, there's a second other normal ability with a separate cooldown that can be interlinked, used in combinations, or different things as you please or see them fit. But for Jace, it's kind of insane what this champion provides from a power pick perspective. Not only are you able to go for a Hullbreaker, which allows you to split push the entire game away, you're also able to go for Mana Mune, which is the best scaling for your champion. But for laning, it's all about raw power. It's about your superpower and just stomping the lane as you see fit. On level 1, you can already demolish the opposition by waiting in a brush for them and then just relentlessly beating it up with your base damage. Don't forget, compared to other champions, you have two abilities on level 1, which is a major difference. Also, make sure to not use your first empowered auto attack on a minion. If possible, use the empowered auto attack on a champion to get the various benefits. Things you can also do is using your thirst ability first before you use your third ability in ranged form. This way you're giving the enemy less counterplay or less room to react. Another thing you need to do is transitioning into your melee form with your ranged second ability. With that you'll transition the attack speed steroid from your ranged ability into your physical melee ability. With this, you just beat up the enemy with your hammer constantly. Also, don't forget that you regain mana when you auto attack enemy champions or minions or any unit in your melee form, which is kinda neat when you consider early game, because if you spam abilities, you will run out of mana. Another thing you need to know is the fact that you gain resistances and attack speed in your melee form. So if you know that the enemy is gonna burst you, make sure to swap into that melee form to receive less damage. It's gonna save you more than once in your lifetime, believe me. The next blind pick on this list is Morgana, and Morgana is one of those champions that is a non-interactive champion. You can view Morgana as like a slow approaching win condition, it's the impending doom nobody wants to face and once the doom is around the corner, well, the game looks pretty much dire. Please. Please, you need to have Leandri's Torment in your item build. If you don't have Leandri's Torment on Morgana at any point in the game, I'm sorry, you are heavily griefing. Morgana relies on this, and with the hyperscaling Leandri's Torment that scales with AP, it becomes super broken on this champion. Because in actual reality, all you will do is plus to the ground with your second abilities and let the enemy walk through those puddles. The moment they touch those puddles with a fully stacked Leandris Torment, or rather, if you are full build with full AP items, this Leandris Torment is gonna deal more than 12% of the enemy's maximum HP over 3 seconds. And trust me, you don't want to be caught in that one. So if you ever want to play Morgana, you will need Leandris Torment. And the only question that remains is, at what place? Normally you can build Leandris Torment on the second or third position of your build. So most of the time you will have it on the second or third position, but then immediately after or before have a Rabadon's death cap. Rabadon's death cap itself doesn't increase Morgana's damage on the second ability too much because the enemy needs to be low for the execute damage to kick in. So to avoid this and give him more poking power, the Leandris Torment is going to help out a little bit earlier. But if you happen to go Leandris second, you will need to get to your third item. Just view it, as I said before, as a win condition. The more items you gain, the more of a monster you become and the enemy will not be able to fight against you. Please don't build items such as Rylai's, you will just handicap your own build and own damage for no reason, unless you're going for the full support of Morgana build with a Rylai's and a Mandate. Other than that, don't do it. The next blind pick is also gonna be an AP champion. Don't forget those blind picks are only for solo queue and because in solo queue games are extended unbelievably long, AP champions become severely broken for no apparent reason. 
and with Gwen we have another champion that is dominating the solo queue ladder once you understand what this champion does. And usually that revolves around getting to free items. And pe the peculiar reason is all AP champions are broken with free items. Surprise! Because they're scaling heavily into the game. The primary reason for this is that AP items are just broken in what they provide and how the game is played. It's just significantly harder to pilot an AD champion, normally at least, and deal damage with them, rather than having some mage use AoE abilities to completely dominate a corridor or an area. Especially in the jungle role, Gwen is actually performing quite well if you start with your first ability, you'll just clear faster with this one. The next patch, as they showed in the preview, is gonna change a bit about that one, but we'll see what happens, so don't be too afraid too much. For laning, we still need to make the decision what is gonna be better. Is it the first ability or the second uh, or the third ability? Because the first ability allows us to have different trading patterns, also influencing the wave differently than the third ability. So depending on the matchup, you'll most likely scale differently. But for the scaling part, all you have to do is survive, and that's pretty much possible against most of the matchups during laning phase and then jungle anyway. It's just a super scale champion that is relatively easy to execute. The next champion on this list is similar to that one, but it's an AD Yasuo version of a monster that nobody wants to have on their team or the enemy team. The obvious reason for this on your team, he's always gonna be 0 and 10, and on the enemy team, he's gonna be 25 and 0. But with this champion, you have a champion that is able to influence the fight like no Yasuo could ever do without putting himself to too much risk. The only issue this champion has is that he is super squishy, and if you mess up just once, you might immediately die. But if you play this champion like you'd play Katarina and just wait just a tiny little bit, you will get the angle to ult the entire enemy team or the vital targets and send them back into the Shadow Realm in an instant. Your ultimate CCs them long enough for you to hit them and beat them up and just give them no chance of playing the game. And for no reason, your champion deals so much damage, it's crazy. And even though this champion has clear weaknesses during the laning phase, since he's played in mid lane predominantly, they cannot really be abused because mid lane as a lane is very difficult to gank or to punish depending on the champions you have. And even if you're in a bad situation, you can always unfreeze the wave with your third ability and then just snap back once you see that you're getting collapsed on. It is literally unfair and this champion has way too many strength compared to his weaknesses and I really hope he's gonna see more nerfs than the nerfs he's gonna get because let's be honest it's not an adjustment, it's a nerf but it's not gonna be enough to deal with this champion's damage because if there's anything this champion has too much it's damage. Our next solid blind pick is Shen. Shen is one of those champions that is severely underrated as well as really powerful depending on the context you're gonna play him. His laning phase is really potent, especially if you understand what to do with his first ability. You can hide your first ability in an enemy brush inside the lane, and then once the enemy approaches to get minions, you can recall the blade and pull it through him, and then get the attack speed bonus and more bonus damage on your first ability. With this, you can dominate trading patterns during the laning phase and put the enemy into a bad spot already from the get-go. And this, since Sen has an ability that is a dash on level 2 if you decide to skill it, you'll have all in pressure thanks to Ignite and this ability. So if whenever the enemy is trying to walk up to do this, you can punish the enemy. Also, don't forget, your first ability grants you an extended auto attack range that you want to play around exactly with your grass proc. That way you'll have even more damage and your trades get really unfair. To add even more pain to the mix, you can just use the Divine Sundra and get infinite healing from trading and out damage enemies while dealing percentage health all the time, this time in magic damage and physical damage thanks to the item. That way it gets really difficult for enemies to deal with you unless they commit also for Divine Sundra. Don't forget, Shen also features something very unique. The ability to go for the Hullbreaker and still able to ultimate to the entire team on the other side of the map. With the ultimate, you'll just be able to relocate super fast while having dealt with a terrible wave already and then having your team set up for success while you help them out and your lane is running into the enemy tower and therefore they are losing minions and gold while you're getting a lot of value. But 
be very careful to not do this too often when your wave is in a bad spot, especially when platings are still available. The enemy might capitalize on that one and the gold lead will be too severe in the sideline so you can't face the enemy anymore. And that's it for today's video. Thank you all for watching and if you enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and come back for more content. We're always happy to have you here.